Hi guys, welcome to Business Tip Tuesday. I'm gonna give everybody just a second to jump on here. If you guys joined us on Sunday night, you know that my computer is giving us a little bit of trouble on our live videos. Um, there are some updates that I guess need to happen. So I am here on my phone and I just wanna give everybody a few seconds to jump on. Hi Casey, you guys, happy Tuesday. I hope um, you guys are doing well. I know some of you are probably getting back into work mode here, or if you've been like us, you've been working a million hours as it is, and so you're getting back to normal, which probably feels really good. Okay, so we've got a few people on here. So I want to welcome you guys to the Next Generation Gym Owners Business Tip Tuesday. Um, where we help gym owners take control of their freedom, recruit new members, and earn their freedom. Each week, we'll bring you tried and true business tips so that we can connect you with your profits. So your website is one of the most effective tools in your gym. A website done correctly should act as an employee for your business. It should save you time, it should save you money, and it should be one of the most effective marketing tools you have in your arsenal. This week's Business Tip Tuesday is to make sure your website is a place where people can take action. So for your audiences, we've got about three primary audiences that we wanna focus on when we're looking at our website. Audience number one is our prospects. These are the people who might have an interest in programs at your gym, but you don't know that yet because they haven't reached out to you and they haven't inquired about classes just yet. So for your prospects, um, they should be able to find a variety of information on your website, such as maybe the difference between competitive and recreational programs. I know in this area, that's a popular question that people ask. You know, are we going to be competing in our recreational classes? If I do novice cheer, will I be competing? So you can put that information right there on your website and make it convenient for people so that if they are very new to the sport, that they can learn that information easily. You also wanna put on there an opt-in so that they can get information on class schedule and pricing. Um, we don't put our class schedule and pricing on our website without an opt-in because I want to know who my prospects are so that I can use my email marketing to then turn those into leads. Also information about events, camps, clinics. If you can get people in the gym, they are more likely to become a member of your gym and not just a member, a long-term member. So if you can get them to take classes and then get them to purchase events from there, uh, you're more likely to have a long-term member that will be with you for longer, um, you know, up to a year, two years, three years. Our recreational families sometimes have a shorter uh, lifespan with us, but we can really lengthen that by getting them involved. They should be able to find information about your facility. Um, maybe they wanna know if you have a certain piece of equipment or if you offer gymnastics or if you offer trampolines. Uh, they should be able to find all of that information as well as the amenities that you may provide in your facility. If I'm a mom and I'm new to the, to the gym, maybe I wanna bring my laptop and work while my child's at class. Do you have Wi-Fi that I can use? Is there somewhere I can plug in? Think of those things on a facility page right there on your website. Also information about birthday parties. Um, what packages do you offer? Do you have add-ons? So can I purchase my cake through you or pizza? Um, can I get balloons? Can I get drinks from you? Um, do you offer bounce houses with your packages? So whether you offer the ability to actually book those parties online or not, you definitely want to be able to provide the information and then give them an action plan from there. So maybe you have an opt-in where you want people to enter their information and you can give them a call about parties. Or maybe you do have a link where you're allowing people to book parties right there on your website. No matter what, for your prospects, they shouldn't have to create a member's account of any kind in order to take these actions. You want it to be simple for them and you don't want them to have to be redirected to your class management software. So make sure whatever you're doing is frictionless. It's easy, they don't have to create an account, they can make a purchase with their credit card, they aren't told to call the gym, stop in the gym, uh, email the gym, they can take action right there on your website. So that's your prospects, that's audience number one. 
Audience number two is your members, and this is what we're getting ready to do. We're building out a members resource area. In our members resource area, we're gonna have that class schedule. So if you guys offer opt-ins um, as a way to obtain the class schedule, how many times do you have your gym members opting in? Sometimes even your all-star parents because maybe they wanna put little sister in a class. They're already a member of the gym, but now they're opting in. And so they're adding to your list of marketing people that you then have to go and take off because they're not really prospects. So we'll have a class schedule easily accessible for all members of the gym right there in our members resource area. Also team announcements. Maybe you have um, some specific announcements for classes or teams. That's a great place to put them because we don't wanna put those on our public social media where just anybody can see those, right? That's public social media is for our prospects really. So we can then put all that stuff in a members resource area and make it really easy for our own gym members to find. Maybe you have an option to book private lessons right online and you can put that in your members resource area or um, virtual class options right now would be very popular or your COVID phase plan. A couple other things to consider when those competition schedules start coming out, those don't have to go out to the general public because somebody who doesn't know your gym and doesn't have any intention of attending a competition doesn't really care what your competition schedule is. So that's a great thing to put out in your members resource area. Start thinking of the things that parents are consistently asking you or your front desk for and meet those needs before they actually ask for them. A couple other things we're gonna add is a link to um, change your credit card with us, a link to sign a waiver. Um, we already have that out on our website, but if you have a friend is being brought or um, little sister, we still do need a waiver online. So we'll offer that to both our prospects who have just started classes with us or just bought a trial membership. And then we'll also offer that for our members so that they can pass it on if they're bringing someone with them. Um, direct access to message the office staff. That drift feature is fantastic if you want somebody to be able to ask a question that way rather than sending you a DM or a PM, okay? How many times do we get parents sending us those, but maybe we haven't provided easy access for them to ask questions through our website or Facebook? Okay, your final audience that we're gonna talk about for your website here is the general community. Maybe you have people who aren't necessarily going to be members, but um, they know others who could be prospects for you. So for those people, we wanna offer content on our website and we wanna continue driving people to our website from social media to that website. Because if there is a member of the community that already knows, go to twistersports.com, then it's really easy for them to give that information to somebody else who might become a prospect. So for example, maybe you can write a blog about one that we're working on right now because we've just started our practices back after a lot of weeks of being off blog about how to recover sore muscles, okay? What sore muscles mean, that it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing, but you do have to take care of your sore muscles to make sure you don't get the same sore muscles week after week. Maybe you have an at-home checklist for how to get your jumps higher. Here are three exercises you can be doing at home. Here are three drills you can be doing at home to get your jumps higher. Um, a checklist for your first practice. So if you just bought a trial membership, maybe in your first autoresponder is a link to them that says, here's a checklist of things for your first practice. Make sure you have um, socks and tennis shoes and your hair is pulled back and all of these things. Um, flexibility tips. Everyone is always looking for flexibility tips. This is a great one. Maybe there's a dance studio in town and those kids need some flexibility training and someone knows someone who saw that blog and they're now going to pass your blog on to kids who go to a dance studio or to parents of kids who go to a dance studio. Offering that content starts to drive people to your website and when you get a dancer who is now on your website or a dancer's family who's now on your website, they're going to see all the great tumbling options that you offer. And isn't that the coolest in a tumbling or in a choreography routine when you've got some tumbling that that choreographer can use for the dance? Um, become the expert. Use the content on your site to become the expert in whatever field that you have. Um, whether that is tumbling or stunting or fitness or maybe character development for children. And then 
Think about some features. There are some cool kids in your gym. You have some great staff members. Maybe there's some parents who are doing great things in your gym and you can write features on them. Share them out on your social media where people are gonna then click to go to your website to read that article. One of the most popular blogs we ever wrote was about a little girl in our gym who went from being so shy she wouldn't talk to anybody to then going out and competing, doing competitive cheer in front of 3,000 people. It was a really popular blog and I think that it meant a lot to her family and to the rest of the team to see what kind of things she had accomplished. So when people go to an effective website, they're more likely to take action, resulting in higher daily sales, more trial members, and an overall frictionless experience. So thank you for joining us for this week's Business Tip Tuesday. For more information on Next Generation Gym Owner Services, including our upcoming virtual conferences or the Academy, head right over to our website at nextgenowners.com. Don't forget to join us every Tuesday right here at 10.